In other news, Foreign Affairs Minister Melanie Jolie is visiting Ukraine today. It's her fourth trip there since Russia's full-scale invasion almost two years ago. I can feel the strength of the Ukrainian spirit. As well as holding talks with her Ukrainian counterpart, Jolie is also expected to meet President Volodymyr Zelensky. CBC's Abby Kuithasen is monitoring this story for us this morning, and she joins us now live from London. So, Abby, we're just 20 days shy of that two-year anniversary for the war. So what message is Jolie delivering to Kyiv today? Marianne, the minister says nearly two years into this war, nothing has changed when it comes to Canada's support for Ukraine. She's already met with Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba this morning uh, in a joint news conference. She talked about what Ottawa has already done, even before Russia's wider scale invasion. She talked about Operation Unifier, a Canadian armed forces mission, part of which is to train Ukrainian troops. That training happening in places like Poland, Latvia, and here in the United Kingdom. It includes both basic and advanced military training. Here's what the minister had to say about the financial support uh, that Ottawa has provided to Kyiv thus far. Canada is a proud friend of Ukraine, and we have stood firm with Ukrainians as uh, they're fighting for their freedom since day one. We have provided at this point $9.5 billion of aid. Uh, including $2.4 billion in military aid. As we reach a two-year mark since Russia's full-scale invasion began, our support to Ukraine's independent future remains unwavering. She also spoke about Canada's role in working to ensure long-term security commitments for Kyiv under the umbrella of the G7. And she repeated Canada's position, Marianne, that Ukraine's future lies within NATO. And Abby, in addition to this military aid, we know that Jolie is also announcing Canada's role in a new initiative concerning those children abducted from Ukraine. So what can you tell us about that? Yeah, we've been following this conference in Latvia the last couple of days, and it certainly underscored a major concern out of Kyiv, the taking of Ukrainian children from occupied territories into Russia by Russian forces. The conference in Riga featured the Ukrainian First Lady, Olena Zelenska, as well as some of the children who've been rescued from Russia. Zelenska said only 388 uh, children have been brought home and that more than 19,500 remain in Russia. Jolie says Canada will be involved in a new initiative. It's called the International Coalition for the Return of Ukrainian Children. Canada will use its diplomatic network around the world to reach out as if these children were Canadian children, and we will talk to many, many countries of the world, Mexico, Brazil, South Africa, Qatar. And from there, we will raise awareness. When she talks about working with other nations, she said that also includes those with close ties to Moscow. She mentioned that Ottawa will start a consular file for each child, again, saying that these children will be treated by Ottawa as if they're Canadian children. Now, we've heard from a child psychologist who works with some of the rescue children who said they were told Ukraine doesn't exist, that their families don't want them anymore. Uh, the ICC has already acted based on the evidence it has by issuing arrest warrants. One of them is for Russian President Vladimir Putin. That was issued last March for being responsible for removing Ukrainian children from their homeland during a time of war. Moscow doesn't recognize the ICC, and it's not clear how cooperative it will be in this international effort to bring thousands of Ukrainian children home, Marianne. All right, thanks for this, Abby. That's the CBC's Abby Kuhathasen in London.